I, I enjoy oh it. Oh my god. Um <clears throat> If you spell applesauce with a B, you can call it applesauce. Boom, boom, boom. Welcome We're once again to Wondering stuff. Monster, the Monster Manual of Podcasts. My name is John Baldisberger. I am Charles Harbernard. Ian Zavas. I'm also a Charles. Um, let's go with Chuck Thaniel today. Uh, I believe. Chuck Thaniel. I believe I like last time, uh, first, two, a couple things. First, Charles, you don't know this, but your name is underneath you this time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's what if I go over here? No, fuck. Still you underneath fucked, me? You fucked my it, entire oh. overlay. You son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> the second thing, though, is Charles, on the last stream we had, you explicitly stated that uh, Mr. Pashkey could be Charles tonight. Yeah. That yeah. He had earned and the right. Tonight, call me Chuck. All right, <sighs> Chuck. Ain't That's Chuck. a lot yeah. of responsibility. It I don't... is. Whenever oh, I think man. of Chuck, I always think of the plant from um, Maniac Mansion. Okay. I'll oh, yeah. That. Yeah. Obscure yeah, LucasArts yeah, yeah. reference, but there you go. No, man, I, oh, dude, I was, uh, I think I was rattling at John about Maniac Mansion just the other day, but, yeah, early, we're early gonna, days, games. We're gonna, I completely blanked on looking up new and cool Kickstarters this week, and I'll tell you why. Um, over the last week, I've gotten three emails announcing new Kickstarter campaigns from people who I have not gotten the last thing I backed from them yet. Um, I understand that part of that is shipping, and I understand that some people run their career off crowdfunding, but it's a real bad taste in my mouth when you're asking me to spend more money on you when you have yet to get me the last thing I paid for. Um, Can I throw in something here? Uh, I don't mind like naming names right here. Uh, you remember that Alley Man's tarot card set? Yeah, yeah, I do. Did you just take uh, your money and fucking duck? I I should be getting it soon. The guy's been updating with increasingly whiny updates, and like at one point he was talking about how like he's getting the material shipped from China and the shipping container costs extra and blah blah. blah. And I was like, dude, what in the fuck is your business model? Like, what are you doing? And <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there so... are legitimate, like there are a lot of legitimate shipping issues, and there's a paper shortage. Like, there's a lot of shit going on. I get that, but like, I don't know, man. I I don't. I personally am frustrated, and it's people I like is what's really frustrating. It's like I trust these people, but it just and I don't feel good with that happening. Um, I will say one of the first projects I backed ever was a game called Lost contact um paradise lost first contact i think um Ooh. looks like a really cool stealth game about a plant alien and um i <laughs> uh they stopped updating i think last year again first thing Oof. i kick started so like every every few months they would post something and be like we're still working on it and there'd be like 400 comments of like yeah whatever fuckers <laughs> Hey, the, the coolest the, the coolest failed Kickstarter I backed was Serpent's Tongue. Does anyone remember that? I do not. It was nope. a magic inspired, um, not quite a TC, uh, you know, TCG or something like that, but you would have like wizard duels, like uh, like direct okay, cool. PvP. Yeah, and there'd exactly. be a card don't have to that would have that. blitz on it on your side, but you'd have to know what they mean how to cast a spell was the uh, opponent facing and you would have to like make subtle into like gestures and stuff to, to to cast the spell so your opponent would know if you're actually doing all of the the hand signals uh and that died halfway out through the gate but uh, uh, that's, so the that's opponent determined whether you did it right correct that's that no i'm undefeated that... yeah <laughs> oh you did that Seriously. one wrong bro Hey, you're not good like, at this. If we are, if we are crapping on people it, for incompleted Kickstarters, I always, I have to do one plug that's like years probably outside the plug needed to give. But Cryptozoic once uh, did the superhero awesome you know, person move 
where there was someone that was embezzling funds mm -hmm. and it was um the doom that came to uh atlanta mm -hmm. and it was a uh monopoly-ish clone of lovecraftian's game mechanics yeah. sure 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 I booked uh subbed everyone on the bills and left everyone in lurch and cryptozoic bought the rights and then made pledges for everyone and the person got sued and they're supposed to be like paying back the oh, money wow. to everyone so like cryptozoic like, cool. that's free very game. cool anywho that was like um, eight years ago but good on you cryptozoic eight years ago i hope you're still good there's another person that both david and i backed um who is a friend of mine that i helped like drive their campaign and i got people on board to like create extras for their campaign uh they did like a a like release party locally where they like sold the thing and gave it to people who came in october i think and i who live four miles south of that have not gotten mine yet wow. and i'm in the Even fucking book yeah. so I'm, yeah. I'm i'm really salty i'm waiting for him to be like hey we have another kickstarter and at which point i will spit directly in his eye um <laughs> Every Kickstarter I've backed since, well, starting like two weeks ago, my bank keeps flagging it for fraud and texts me every single time I do a Kickstarter wanting to know if it's a legitimate purchase. Never mind all the other like suspicious transactions I've made in the last couple of weeks. It's the Kickstarter <laughs> that I've been doing for 11 years. It's, it's my, uh, I have something similar happening, but it's my wife in a book. Uh, the last so, time that happened for me was when I signed up for like uh, Fansly, I think, or OnlyFans, one of those. Like, I my bank texted me and was like, "Oh my god, someone has your card!" And I'm like, "No, I really just want to jerk off." And so, yeah. <laughs> it's a really, really awkward conversation with the teller. Uh, well, I mean, like, I it's not a thing that I, I I I'm not I do not subscribe to OnlyFans, but I can't imagine that I know how the conversation would go. So we think someone has your card, sir. They they've used it to subscribe to OnlyFans. Um, did you happen to notice the other pornographic subscriptions that are on my card? What so about what, and I did you notice that there aren't like two people dinners on the card? I have to be on the real here. Like, um, I don't want this to turn into a whole conversation about just pornography, but the state of Utah passed a law. So if you uh, have an IP address or your phone's IP address or anything that's pinging from Utah, every porn site pops up with a warning because our state has declared porn like a health menace, like tobacco or whatever. So they don't get sued. They have to put a warning that says state of Utah warning, uh, blah, 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 blah. Like How long ago was it? To proceed. So it's just like an extra, you know, are you 21 or whatever, but like it is so – because Utah has a long-standing like, hatred of pornography. Um, so the arrival of the internet was a very big deal for me. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they've been trying to like get around that ever since. Um, what a strange thing. I got to use my VPN. Isn't it just... for a state that has a, like, a large percentage of the polyamorous cults? that marry yeah. off underage girls. Like, what a weird line to draw, Utah. I, I think what you're missing is how long ago did that happen and when did Ian start getting flagged for Kickstarters? <laughs> <gasps> Causation yeah, is correlation. Yeah. Um, um, the, the thing with Utah is also ironic because I made, it, maybe it was in retaliation, I don't know, but every year Pornhub does their statistics about, like, what people are into in different places and like which states use it the most. And like Utah is always like way up the list. Like it's a lot of, lot of good straight laced Mormons looking at porno. So I think that's why it, it's like a big deal in the, the government here. They're like trying to save people from themselves. And so, so we're, we're tonight, last week, last week we played. Yudera. Are we Trash sure that's how it's pronounced cool. by the way? You know, I have not been corrected. Uh, so if Caleb's um, okay. watching this, he can just he can correct us now. Yeah, uh, Caleb, if if we're saying this just real funky, should um, we roll the R? Yigdera. Ah. Is the Y I silent? Can't roll my R. Yigdera. No, Y is not the y So Yig is a serpent god. Uh, Yig is definitely correct. I think the I think the D is silent, so it's Yigdera. 
You get it. I like it. There's also a uh, invisible Z. <laughs> but it's silent. It is silent. Yeah. But you do need to like you get it. So um, we did play it. We played it. We uh, and today we're going to talk about our thoughts on it. Um, so this is like mechanically speaking, this is Markborg. Uh, in in many ways, there mm-hmm. are a few key differences, uh, and there were some things that aren't were not quite ironed out because this was in Kickstarter when we recorded, and it is still in development as we uh, speak. So it just mm-hmm. once it got sent to printer. What day is today? Uh, Thir- uh, Monday. Thursday, Monday. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I think what, Friday. All day. Okay. It is sent to. Oh, there. It's Pi Day. Yes, it is. It is I had pizza. <laughs> mm. I hope you, all your pie is damn fine, everyone. Um, yeah. There's your lunch. Defrost the shepherd's pie tonight. So it was so so there were a couple of rounds of edits that were sent, and so it, it it's now going to be going towards fulfillment. Um, okay. But, um. Awesome. Let me just say, coming out of the gate, I I had a blast. Like I thought it was a lot of fun. Sure. It was uh, very open ended, very loose. Like I feel like I fucked up uh, my my character because I kept, I just basically forgot my entire inventory. I had a sack of ball bearings I could have used. Like, it, I mean, I had some crazy useful random items that I just essentially but, forgot. I, but but uh, the challenge was it, it really didn't matter what you did because fate conspired against you. You used like three yeah, points of, of mana. Yeah. You go like five, five, and five. I mean, it was, yeah. it was just, uh, it was not Mr. That's... Bones. It was not as lucky. It was yet. not. Now, now, Ian, was the was the thinning of the veil, was the thinning of reality, uh, built into the rules, or was that a Ian Servas, uh, that, element? That's me, but in the book itself, uh, the author Caleb had suggested that you, when you do use mana or when you really botch or pass a role that you, that technology or just stuff around it kind of crumbles to really kind of emphasize the fact that there are planes that are smashed against each other okay um but for That's me cool. it's almost I like always, a madness embellish, you know it's same thing in Morkborg when you use omens i think that that's such a, a metal thing that you need to do more stuff with it instead of just burning like a fate point like ah whatever it's these are the things that really make a difference so like even when Mr. Bones failed to make a, uh, a sniper shot, he still shot the tusk off of one of the boar cops. Yeah. So, so I think that um, I think this is an interesting point, uh, and it works for Yigdera. I think it works for most Morkborg uh, derivatives. Um, I think the rule book is as much much a suggestion as it is a guide to playing. So, for instance, uh, with that burning mana, things were continually getting, like, weirder each time we did it. And for me as a GM, you know, I would have it reach a breaking point. Like, when we had when we burned five or six or whatever, and I would have something weird enter the fray. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, that, and that, I'm not saying, like, oh, I wish this was in the rule book. I'm saying that it's it's one of the selling points, in my opinion, of this system, is that you do have the freedom to um, interpret things and go crazy if you want to get yeah. butt stuff weird, if you will. You know, I, <laughs> I think you know something that we even talk about offline are that there are a lot of different games that take an idea and build a concept and may or may not flesh it out to the point of of real functionality, but yeah. I think at the same time it's also very liberating for someone that wants to has ideas and wants to think outside the box. And sometimes someone just needs a, a nudge to do those things. And that's, I think one of the best things about you dare in a way is that it brings in, you know, I, I mentioned kind of like riffs, like riffs is just a conglomeration of everything. Right. Um, and some people get so shoehorned into, well, there's this canon, this lore that I can't break. But if you're just basically said, you can do whatever, some people will actually latch on to that and they have that permission and then they flourish. Yeah, and then there's people who who freeze when they're given yeah. too much, too many options. 
uh when we were working on uh when we were working as we are working on the numinous brutality game uh one of the things we struggle with is i wanted a very extremely free form uh i likened it to big eye small mouth dynamic sorcery i wanted people to just like say what they wanted to do and then for it to happen um but one of my team members um joel clark was very quick to point out that like oftentimes when uh games use those kind of mechanics it stalls gameplay because not everyone is ready for that kind of freedom so middle ground is kind of best now you know going uh two things uh first is we kind of discussed wealth and the wealth mechanic yeah did now has that did that grow because the way it was in the book is like you had a wealth stat essentially Mm -hmm. and if if something costs less than that wealth stat you could just have it I, I yeah. think that I mean it, it. I think I have to check the last draft. I think it was left as that. So I, that might just be a, a GM adjudication of how you want to handle that. And I could see that being a bit of a challenge in in certain areas. The one of the major things that really shifted to was the expansion of areas. So as the book when we first got a grubby pause on it had three sample like cultures or. Uh, they call them kind of districts or planes, chunks of planes that were smashed. Since then, there is a lot more now. And so those prosperity scores really change, which is where you have your cap of how much wealth you can use. Um, but I, I do think that's something that is going to be something that GM will just have to putz with. You know, speaking of districts smashing together, it reminds me of both Zas Urkala and um, Black Void. Um, two two were. tabletop RPGs that are part part of me. Oh, I so said those are definitely words. I'm saying I didn't. I wasn't familiar. They're both they're both TTRPGs. <laughs> One was super indie, uh, fashioned after like doom metal. It's very cool. I I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, and the other is kind of this like weird Middle Eastern bazaar of gods and nice. and weird entities. But both kind of feature the whole idea of like planes crashing together and merging in weird ways. Um, you know, since we also thinking about when we digest these games, we talk about reactions. You know, we talk a lot about mechanics and things. And um, what are other like player reactions? Like, if someone would you recommend this to someone, like another player or a GM, or what were some of your favorite takeaways? Okay. Uh, those might be interesting points for discussion. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll say if we're putting this as a table, I'd put it towards you, Chuck Tastic, because I know that we tend to dominate the audio. What are your What are your thoughts? Give us the raw Chuck take. He's he's Charles tonight. Yeah, we're, well, he's talking to you, Chuck. Well, he was Chuck Tastic at the time of the play. That's true, motherfucker. Okay, look, Paschke, relativity. Tell us, tell us your thoughts. Relativity. Okay, open, so your, we're open just, your mind to us. I, I'm a last name now. Okay, that's fine. I can work with this. Cool. Uh, so <laughs> it was fun. I really liked the world uh, that that uh, Ian verbally built around everything. It just mm-hmm. it seemed like that kind of like 1990s like Saturday morning disaster cartoon where like street sharks could have just showed up and I would have yeah. accepted it. It felt that. kind of Duke Nukem to me too. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, very fun. Like, like Mutant League was on the television. We just didn't turn to look and see. <laughs> but yeah, so I liked that a lot. Uh, I didn't have to use my points that often, so I, I I feel like you guys used them a lot, and I barely used them. So I think that maybe it is the right balance. But again, I was in an air duct. <laughs> So, yeah, you you totally like bypassed like the, the, when you were like, is there an air duct? I was like, yeah. Now yeah. that I'm thinking it out loud, my rolls were really hot last week, so yeah, I just kicked in a fan. I this is good because you're the one who actually pulled the fucking thing off. Like I will occasionally, yeah. like there were times I didn't need to use a mana point, but it would be better for the storytelling aspect of our show 
uh, for me to make a role. Like, um, you know, when when I've yelled, I'm getting your chit lens, and I punched through a hole <laughs> I cut in your taint to grab you. Like, like I built so much that momentum. That was so fucking gruesome. <laughs> I, I built so much momentum in the fiction that to then fob the role would be so anticlimactic. And um, I feel un, like unsatisfactory. Now, fobbing a roll as I just take a swipe and I miss and I get caught, like, there's different, like, in this setting, my goal is to be, is to experience the game and to be as entertaining as possible, right? And so that dictates more than character survivor, survivor, survival ever will when I use points, when I, when I try to nudge things. And and so on and so forth. Um, so I said I said before, like this reminds me of Shadowrun. Um, the setting itself. Mm -hmm. um, that you know, said, one, one of the things though is that you know we focused it on capitalism because there were three districts. Now there's uh, what like nine or so, and I actually even got to write one. So before, I think the easiest one, the the, th the core three they gave you was prototypic uh, hero fantasy um the shadow runny whatever age corporate uh and the last one was kind of aztec and insinuated uh stone-based culture with some type of lovecraftian god made of eyes following things around now there's a whole bunch more i actually made uh, a couple different ones uh that could have gone in the book and the one that was chosen got shortened to just ur but i originally titled it the, dra or the dinosaur riders of Ur, basically cavemen, like a Neolithic race of barbarians that after the planes crashed, found all this tech, took the tech, conquered their dinosaurs, and then became dinosaur, you know, con, you know, white scars uh, kind of people, just conquering everyone with their lasers. And um, so, so have you considered, uh, there's like this director who's worked with Netflix, who's done a couple of movies that are like exactly that aesthetic. Like oh. I think one of them is actually like a a dinosaur cop or something. Dinosaur like, cop should... was a movie from the nineties. Uh, Tam the T Rex. Uh, what, oh, are you thinking about like Kung Fury and? Uh... I was gonna say I yeah, think that, those, guys, those guys. Those guys. Right, cop. If if you get yeah. this to them, I guarantee, like, you know, dinosaur I... riding people with lasers. So I yeah, I'm not going to get. I could hey, I could have an entire. Uh, I could do an entire podcast on kung fury um oh, yeah. specifically Modern classic it's just really hey, good just... and a bunch of nazis die and that's all i fucking yes, want in life. i mean david hasselhoff <laughs> did the theme song how can you go wrong many ways yeah. uh, hasselhoff is not a good person <laughs> I mean, he might yeah, be a good is. person i don't like him i don't appreciate him but i like the way he eats a hamburger when he's very drunk um, yes, I do like that. I don't know. Get a cool car. Pantomime it. <laughs> Go ahead. No, we're Not gonna Charles, leave out you the do audio it? only. I'll viewers. narrate, I'll, sure I'll narrate it. Mastication sounds. I'll narrate it while you act it out. Okay, Charles is lifting his hands to his mouth. His eyes are kind of rolling back in his head. Um, his tongue has rolled out and is kind of wrapping around the. Burger is very sensuous. Are we going um, from comedy what? podcast? Oh, he just to erotic? taken off his pants, and I don't know if this podcast is erotic, but this video of Charles removing his pants while <laughs> eating an imaginary hamburger sure oh. as fuck is. Uh, um, oh, thank you, thank I, you I for showing us that, Charles. I'm imagining this like the one it. viewer who's going to like uh, download this audio and it's like stuck in traffic somewhere and they're going to hear this <laughs> group of shit and people are going to like look over at cars and like, what the hell is that person's problem? He's just like, <laughs> and then Charles pants <laughs> Raw dog Which Charles took murder. off the pants? We never uh, clarified that. What I'm so excited about is the one person we're going to get an email from that was just like, I didn't realize that was my fetish but i've been <laughs> yeah. awakened now we do have yep. to give you a warning if you are in the state of utah this may be yes. bad for your health this podcast I, may cause blindness we, uh hairy palms 
devil. We horns. also sell. Um, we also sell a, a journal called Boundaries. I didn't know I had in, in Kings. I didn't know existed for you to yeah, document. I like to keep up on Kings. Yeah, the document your self discovery with reading and also this podcast. And on video, if necessary, <laughs> or desired, you know. Ian, uh, so thank you for clarifying that because I was what I was going to say is that um, I like the setting of Shadowrun, but I do not like playing Shadowrun. <laughs> so this was a more immediate way to get into that sort of feeling of playing a, a good thing in that setting. Um, I like the Super Nintendo version of Shadowrun. Super Nintendo version of Shadowrun is fucking baller. It's I'm so pretty, good. I have it's the Sega. It's pretty dumb. Um, it's not the Sega. The Sega and the, the SNES version are completely different. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Okay. And the SNES one is better, but it's just they're they're two different beasts. But they're, they're, they're two how, different yeah, yeah. genres. Yeah. I yeah. did not know uh, these existed. I sorry. Uh, you if if you if you enjoy the like point and click are actually kind of actiony RPGs SNES. of the SNES era, you should um go to your local store and buy an emulator <coughs> uh, a console and a <coughs> um and a copy of the game and get it's it's really good it's super if only good. my Wii was modded it's had a terabyte let's hard drive Nintendo after us folks let's not let's not let's that's not that's just not, not that one you have to you have to you have to go look here's the fun thing been... is like i'm i'm enough of a retro futurist that uh i have um hooked up to my like you know big ass 4k tv my original nes circa 1980 something <laughs> and my uh, original super nintendo and like those were baller as hell on like a smaller sh- screen. Mm-hmm. Um, now they're better on, like on that big... small screen, sir. <laughs> yeah, will... exactly. So Except you, you need the CRT to the blind. blind. <laughs> What's Charles, that? Have, it was just this... too much talking at once. Who was? Uh oh, Ian. Yeah. Ask a question. What me? Yes. Oh, I was just asking if you have an upscaler. Uh no no okay. No, I have, I'm gonna run I have. that raw dog right into the TV. Um, <laughs> luckily, it, it has like not... the old, old school like red and white hookups. I, I, to, I like, still have my HDMI my uh, my tube TV so I can use my zapper. So yes, nice. it's the only way to do I it. I still the, have the my Pixels zapper. Pixels were designed like... for that like rectangular shaped like screen RGB. What brain fart can't think talk yeah. straight. Um, <laughs> It was designed for that aspect ratio that was not completely correct and square. So when you yeah. put it into a current TV, it's it stretches it and goes wonky. You have to have a CRT television. Sorry. So we have uh, the ROMs that they're putting out now um, because we're get, we, we've hit like the 30 year anniversary of a lot of these games. So yeah. they're putting out collections like the Mega Man collection. There's like five of them, I believe. The Castle. Uh, there's been two Castlevania collections. Now. Uh, the I I don't know if you guys keep up with video game news, but Sony had the state of play, uh, last week where they announced mm-hmm. the Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection, which is <laughs> the thirteen games they put out for Game Boy, Nintendo, and Super Nintendo in one collection, and I my just shit. about shit myself with excitement. Yep. That's that my has shit right nothing there. to yep. do with the Igdera. <laughs> Dude, like, uh, wasn't um, the SNES one was adapted from the arcade game, wasn't it? Which or one? Was it the other way around. Yeah, there's, there's, there's so many. Oh, uh, Turtles in Time, I think. Yeah, I that think was, that was an arcade game that first. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. The one where you're fighting on top of the train at one yeah. point. So yeah, anyway, um, that was probably also in Hyperstone Heist, but that was anywho. Um, but yes, you there. You can, I, I mm. look so good. I How had many, a lot 13 of fun. Fucking games? Yeah, thirteen. Um, I had a lot of fun with Igdera. Um, yeah. The question is always going to look. The question with us is always going to be: Is this game fun, or did we make this game fun? And having looked through the rule book, uh, having played through it now, um, 
I gotta say, I think it's just fun. Yeah. I think, it, I think I mean, my questions for a game is always, is it flexible and rigid for my pleasure enough to fulfill me? And in this case, both things were there. I think one of my favorite things about the book, which is a really small, subtle thing that you wouldn't get as a player, but if you read the book, there were some little scribbled asides in various places that really mm-hmm. kind of hearkened to uh, like Caiaphas Kane novels and, you know, kind of like oh, the footers in yes. those books. You know, th- there's like little comments, like there's the, the chart where you roll 2D100 to see what random NPC char- mm-hmm. mutant characteristics are. And one of them was like, I don't know, like 90 years, like 87 was like mosquito. And then a little scrawled in the ledger was, why? Uh, <laughs> and so there were some self-referential comments like that that I, I really That's very enjoyed cool. because it really, you know, even as it was breaking the fourth wall, it did so lovingly with a nod and a wink rather than just like a big deadpool there's a yeah, uh, yeah. there's a game in kickstarter right now called astro infernus which is um a like space hell game it Love looks it. great like it's fucking that's my dog it looks fucking beautiful um but one of the things they mentioned like in the in the like they have the regular edition which looks great then they have like a super edition, a legendary edition, which has like more risque art, more art, different color stuff, and commentary and notes and scribbles and lore writing in yeah. the margins and off to the sides of pictures, um, which is amazing. Also, uh, I promised a Facebook group, which is Binding in Blood, that I would do a Jewish Morkborg supplement. Yep. Yeah. And um Oh. Um and uh I'm going to have to like write that stuff in um blood. No, like in the Hebrew? Talmud. So it'll have like blocks of text and blocks of text <laughs> around it. Uh my Hang dog on, needs some The most effective what? magic is written in either blood or Hebrew. That's true. Okay. Like, use its blood and write in Hebrew. It'll fix it. <laughs> you didn't take my advice. <laughs> what is this? Oh, no. What is this dog up to? Well, he covered his mouth, so I can only assume the worst. Oh, which uh, my goodness. Is uh, so, dog diarrhea. So, as just kind of reframing, kind of refocusing back on the matter at hand, since. Uh, Chuck Tastic slash Mr. Paschke slash whatever the name du jour has played in Morkborg games like with me before. This was your second time in Pan Morkborgia, as it were. What are your any other type of thoughts or, or things now that you've had two exposures to a similar rule set, albeit this one being more expanded? Are we yes, that, we, that one was to you. That was no, to me. The Primus. The Primus. I, no, I thought it was to you. It was to you. Oh, Primus. to me. Yeah, because oh, my bad. Here. Yeah. It's so confusing. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Uh, um, it was a long-winded intro of mine. I I quite enjoyed it. Um, I thought that I I think that the loose rule set, like I'm I'm more of a crunch guy. That's like, why I'm uh, when John was yeah when when John was looking for uh, input on numinous brutality and presented me with like kind of two things he was weighing one of them had a little more crunch to it and that's the one i preferred but with this this loosey goosey that worked for me and uh it was like my first time with the rule set that loose uh, i'm not used to having to make that few rolls so that was nice and uh i felt like i could go anywhere and do anything with it which is also fun you know now you i like will... an open world video game and this felt like that in an rp although they're they're all like technically open world. This felt Saints more Rose so. The video game. Um, yeah. The, the you'll be pleased that for the Numinous Brutality, as we have are working on a player feedback form, there is specifically a, a question with you in mind saying, "Where is this on the crunch spectrum? Would you want more crunch, <laughs> less crunch, or is this adequate crunch?" So, for so, anyone who's listening to this in the future, if you read our book, uh, Numinous Brutality. We will want your feedback, and we want you to fill up that form. If you, if you play the like, if you're listening to this in the far future, 
uh, after the full version comes out, we are probably not collecting that information anymore. However, I if you will, might, in case we do a second printing. Uh, no, you I know what? Tried. You know what? That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, is that is it that time? Like, okay, let, let, my dog do is it. deaf, yeah. blind, uh, and has some other health issues. So when she starts scrabbling around in the kitchen, it's like I gotta go. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, so does the dog <sighs> yeah Yep. so let me ask final thoughts on Yigdera Charles Bernard uh, I love the I, I, I should have done more with a very good character um, mm. yeah Mr. Bones is, was awesome I, I failed him <laughs> uh, Mr. Paschke uh, I enjoyed it I definitely uh, would like to go back and revisit that and check out the other worlds once it's published and all finished and everything mm -hmm. uh, I give it uh, at a scale from let's see Mercury to, to Neptune I would probably Saturn okay decent uh, Mr. Servas I, I thought it was fun you definitely when you're talking about paralysis I think in the first version of the draft there was a, I had that paralysis of things I wanted to do but they were so open-ended it was it was hard to have a little bit more funnel structure I think some of the extra content has been added in um, also a monster creating guide was added into it so how to stitch together on monsters I think that'd be really beneficial for a novice GM or someone that just wants uh, some inspiration and then more district I think that's helpful and really helps to tie that down uh, that being said, I definitely you know put together this whole module for you guys, and you literally want it in the front door. And uh, Chuck Tastic won the air event and knocked it out, so you can see ninety five percent of the content. But that's GMing for it. <laughs> I had a conversation with M Mr. Um, oh, oh. I had a conversation with Joel Clark the other day. We were talking about the uh, Clash of Croak module uh, for Numinous Brutality. And he said, hey, if it's designed like this, they may decide not to go to the temple. And I was like, yeah, that, that, is, that is true. Uh, uh, and what were your thoughts since you had asked everyone else yeah, their thoughts? Yeah. Final thoughts. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed myself a lot. And uh, I think the concept is a good, strong one. Um, I'm excited that I... The thing that gets me hot and bothered about role-playing game books is the lore. Like, syst like mechanic. It's rare for me to get excited about mechanics. I mentioned that um, uh, Astro and Furnace game earlier. Like, I don't know what any of the mechanics are. I don't care. It just it's chock a block full of lore. Uh, Morkborg, like, it hardly has mechanics. It's held together by twigs and staples, so mechanically, like evil it was fine. twigs and staples. Uh, yeah, evil twigs. Grim dark staples. Grim, rusted staples steeped in the blood of babies. Um, that said, <laughs> um, you know, I uh, I would buy this game. Uh, I would I would be interested to read about the different districts. Uh, I really enjoyed the uh, various races all being different or all the classes essentially being different races uh because it allows the imagination to go wild and whatever you want to be you can kind of look at it and be like hell yeah let's do that so yeah i i enjoyed it i would i would uh i would recommend it as a side note too um i did all the pre-gens for everyone and i part of it is i was hoping that people would just make, make their own characters because there were some that i really just wanted to make references but i didn't want to hey, shoehorn them in the dennis hopper one was one i did but one of the the classes that you could be was a sand witch and i just couldn't imagine just like pocket sand like i just i um i can't tell that i can't tell that because damn it i'm going to make that game later okay the future joke we <laughs> we need to make our audio on an NDA for this joke. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, this 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 joke requires an NDA. What we need to do um, is do like one long bleeping <laughs> sound and post edit so people I've, think we're this great. I've done that before on this show. Yeah, I, I can't do it again. 
people get sick of that shit, oh, including man. me who had to do it. Um, so but we just cut to us mm. laughing now, right? <laughs> so, um, Pretend okay. like laughing at a sound so I do have some pictures to bring up, some stuff to show. Um, let me pull down the Yigdera uh, picture, picky box. If I can fucking find it, there it is. Um, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, we do still have these beautiful, well, still have, we are still about to have these beautiful metal bookmarks. Uh, the art is called The Kraken by Luke Spooner. It features our logo and a wonderfully large, um, octopus about to devour a diver. We also have, oh, here's a video. Uh, for those of you who are not looking. Introducing Godless Worlds. Uh, that is going live tomorrow. Uh, yep. What that is is the Godless. Rock. Specifically to tabletop role playing games and print and play games. Uh, the first of those games, my friends, is none other than Numinous Brutality. Uh, yep. Now, I mentioned Joel Clark and I were working on this. Uh, Wonderland award-winning author Garrett Cook has been working on this. Uh, former host of Wondering Monster Lemons Clemens has been working on this. Uh, it features the cover art of Luke Spooner. And here is some art from uh, Kim Dea's home, uh, who is a amazing artist. Um, there we go. There's a badass dragon demon. Here's this is called a Gregolegi, and they are horrible flymen who uh, haunt battle battle grounds and eat the dead. So uh, you'll Love get to encounter gone. those gone. in Numinous Brutality. Uh, Numinous, and here's here's a demon for Charles. Um, Numinous Brutality, the abridged rules, comes out tomorrow uh, on Godless and on Itch.io. And I have just put the links on the stream. Uh, for those of you who are listening and not watching... You can get Numinous Brutality at madness-heart-games.itch.io uh, or at godless.com slash collections slash godless worlds because I am not smart like Charles and I did not create tiny URLs for this. And I can see the gleam in his eye of like, this motherfucker didn't make tiny URLs. <laughs> well, um, I see it, Charles. Um, guys, if you could support us, look, on Godless Worlds, it's 99 cents. On itch.io, yeah, it's a dollar. You could and on madnessheart.press. If you go to our website, you can buy it there too. It's a dollar. You get all the same stuff: the character sheet, the maps, the pictures, the book. It's far cheaper than your OnlyFans subscription. And it's <laughs> but, perfectly legal in Utah. I think. But <laughs> asterisk. If you That's, if you do pick this up tomorrow, I would humbly ask that you choose to pick it up from Godless Worlds, uh, from godless.com. The reason is very simple. It's a brand new product type. It's a brand new venture. Uh, it's us really trying something new on the site, and we want to support gaming and gamers. Uh, and show the um, the community, the horror community, that gaming is here to be a part of that. Um, yeah, absolutely. So that's that's all I have to say. And and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback on it. Mm. So well, there's a feedback form again. Uh, tell us stuff, or you can get a hold of us through our various DMs. If you don't like it? Tell us. Yeah, like tell it. us. We can change. We can change. Yeah, uh, that's you know, true. we'll change for you. Oh, I, I have to say, I mentioned everyone, all the designers. Ian, Ian, Ian there, Ian down there put in a shit ton of work. Uh, I was all set to like send a unedited piece of shit to the printer and Ian spent <laughs> hours just like line editing and clarifying, uh, making sure the rules were clear. 
Uh, so uh, we owe like Ian. Ian put in a lot of work to make this thing legible for you guys. Hey, and we're, and we're still like he fine. saved you from he yourself. Being an insult. So, yep. Uh, if if uh, that's how you find Numinish brutality, it's over there. I keep forgetting. Um, if you are looking for us online, you can find us at One Moncast on Twitter. You can find us at MHG MHP underscore Games on Twitter. You can find us at madnessheart.press as a URL. Uh, if you're looking for me specifically, I'm sorry. You got, you got 15 minutes. You shifted. <laughs> what? I thought it was funny. Oh, God. Go ahead. If, if you... Oh, I'm, I'm so lost. You can't, you can't... Look, you cannot derail my train of thought that way. I do not get back on that bunny very well. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. If you are looking for me specifically, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Kaiju Poet or on my personal website, www.kaijupoet.com. There's a little bit of construction dust going on over there as I add games uh, to my, my stuff, but um, you can find the stuff I'm, I've published. You can also find any Kickstarters I'm involved in. Uh, links there. So there you go. Charles, where, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Charles Bernard, where can we find you? Well, uh, if the fine people of the internet are looking for me, they can find me on Twitter at CR Bernard. That's at C R B E R N A R D. Um, they can go to tinyurl.com slash Charles R Bernard, all lowercase. That has the big annotated list of all my stuff in magazines and anthologies and so forth, my short fiction. Uh, my debut novel is available from Madness Heart Press, A Baptism for the Dead. Um, and I have a duology coming out by the end of next month from Raven Tail Publishing. Uh, that is going to be called Arcanum, Volumes 1 and 2. Volume 1 is Initiation. Volume 2 is Mysteries. And, yep, <clears throat> there's Baptism for the Dead uh, by yours truly. Um, I got in today. Want some weird, uh, like mystical crazy utah shit with like a lot of splatter in it uh and pioneers and so forth then go pick that one up uh my new one coming out from raven tail is a uh, tarot the card <laughs> a tarot card spread in uh two volumes uh 10 cards so if you're into tarot uh go check that out when it's available uh, it has artwork by astrid k mickelson uh, and her tarot card set to accompany it should be available soon. And uh, Ian Servas, if the fine people of the internet are looking for you, where should they go? I'm around somewhere. I'm <laughs> still so this. Think of my social media as it's mostly of a '90s era website with the obligatory uh, website under construction GIF. <laughs> like yeah. it's that little guy digging. Well, see, I want I want to streamline. I have a couple different handles. I want to get everything under one consistent handle, and so I just need Smart. to migrate and change portfolios over to one thing. Then I'm going to dump in content, but I don't want to have it scattered across. Uh, you know, I've got a so, you know, like a maximum overbork. I've got a mess sundries, and then I want to get, probably consolidate everything under my Volvo Spork that I've been using forever because that's that's <clears throat> a very recognizable, easily like oh yeah, Vorpal Spork. So. Also, it's also uh, hella fun to say. I will yeah, say right? <clears throat> there's an itch.io link under Ian's name, but uh, very slowly we're going to be like Ian's going to be putting out a lot of stuff uh, under the Madness Art Games uh, banner as we are kind of diving in in a stupid way. Uh, just way too young. We have gung-ho. big plans for Ian. Oh, yes, yes we do. We have Sorry. like I I have handed Ian like three ideas over the last two weeks of like hey once we finish X why don't we do Y hey what's Y hey, son how about Z I can hey, do it Z is stupid what about Quama uh, uh, Quama are giant ant like creatures that live on the island island of Vanderfell oh, in uh, cool. Tamrael. Well, it, so I've been have... I've been playing some Elder Scrolls, y'all. I have to admit. <laughs> um, uh, and Mr. Paschke, not to forget you. I, I don't. Hi. Mr. Paschke, hi. What's up? Where, uh, yeah, where uh, can where can people just like find you and lick you? 
Um, you can lick me on Instagram at Mr. Paschke. Uh, there's a Twitter, but good luck getting any interaction with me on there. It exists. I don't understand. Uh, yeah, so if you want to see what food I made for myself, um, that's going to be on Instagram, uh, as well as really close-up photos of random things that, I don't know, I just thought the texture of my coffee filter looked cool this morning, and no one knows what that is. Just that's good. I like it. I like that. Filter. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I dig it. On all those notes, uh, we are ending a little early tonight, but we're doing it for a good reason, and that reason is I am recovering from a cold, um, and Ian and I have to get Numinous Brutality ready for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, after Numinous Brutality, we are already working on our next project. We are working on the Godless League TTRPG. Uh, if you are not familiar with Godless League, go to godless.com, uh, look me up, John Baldisberger, uh, or you can find a link on kaijupoet.com and read the Godless League, uh, which featured uh, the crimes and passions of John Stabberger, Lush mm-hmm. Butcher, and The Doze. Um, <laughs> it is it is Splatterpunk Bizarro Superheroes, and mm-hmm. we are doing our best to give you a system as broken as the story. Uh, yeah. We will be back next week, and next week we will once again be streaming on Wednesday. Um, yeah, we also have a guest, special guest next week. Uh, the three of us, Charles, Ian, and I, will be playing a game called Liminal, uh, in which we have to uh, uh, basically map out a dungeon on air uh, with a DM. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. The game is in Kickstarter right now. Uh, I was one of the writers for the game, so it should be be a ton of fun. I'm super excited about it. Um, so we will see you then in about a week and a half. Until then, my friends, stay safe. Wait, I didn't say the thing, did I? Which friends, it, thank you so much it, for joining us on this consensual, consensual yep. journey that I call Wandering Monster. I told you I'm recovering from a cold. I am John Baltusberger. I've been Charles R. Bernard. I am Ian Servas. I'm Charles Paschke. We will see you next week. Until then, stay safe, but <clears throat> stay scared. Survival.